the circumstances that drew Chanakya to establish a new kingdom, that is the Maurya kingdom instead of Nanda dynasty. We also reflected upon the main principles of Chanakya's philosophy, which is called Mulani, the roots, the foundations. Sukhasya Mulam Dharma, Chanakya says. Righteousness is the base of happiness in life. Dharmasya Mulam Arthaha, resources or the wealth is the base of keeping a man on the path of righteousness. Arthasya Mulam Rajyam, in order that people have enough resources and people are wealthy and happy, it is very important to have a very powerful and well established kingdom. Arthasya Mulam Rajyam. Rajya Mulam Indriya Jaya. In order that the kingdom is powerful and effective, it is utmost necessary that the king, the ministers, and the bureaucrats have control over their sense organs. They cannot afford to be lustful. Indriya Jaya Mulam Vinaya. How can one attain victory over the in sense organs through humility, Vinaya. Vinayasya Mulam Seva. How can one be humble in life? By serving the elders. Elders not just by age, but who are senior in knowledge, who are senior in wisdom. So, uh, Vinayasya Mulam Seva. as Sri Krishna also says in the fourth chapter. Tadvidhi pranipate na pariprashne na sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnani na stattva darshina. In Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says that Tadvidhi pranipate na go to the knowledgeable people, go to those who are learned and bow down to them. Pariprashne na ask them questions and sevaya serve them. If you know this, obviously the knowledgeable people, the wise people will enlighten you with the wisdom. 34th verse of the 4th chapter. And finally, Chanakya say, Mantra Moolaha Sarvarambaha All the beginnings, all the projects have their foundation in discussion in counseling, in exchange of ideas. The more open you are to new ideas, the more successful you can be in life. And who knows it better than this country in the world. Here it is the idea that succeeds. Thousands of years ago, wise sages of ancient India declared in Bhadra Sukta of Vedas, Ano Bhadraha Kratavo Yantu Vishwataha. Let the noble thoughts come to us from all directions. We should be open to ideas. We should never close our doors that oh, I am going to listen to only these people and not to these people. I am only going to read this book and not any other book. Such closeness makes a man a monad. And that's the degeneration that brings about stagnancy. You should open to ideas. Having understood these foundations of Chanakya, let us now go upon <coughs> the pearls of practical wisdom from Chanakya Niti. Today, for the entire period, I'm going to give you some suggestions from Chanakya of practical wisdom. 
These are such simple verses. You will know, oh my God, I knew all it. Oh my God, I, but it is so very well said. It's quite possible that you may not get a single new idea today. But what is important is your wisdom will be crystallized today. You will compile your wisdom. You will have an altogether new perspective on the idea that you already knew but you never put into practice and hence you never were benefited by it. So today is an evening of revelations in the light of Chanak. My Vyaspit welcomes you on this wonderful journey tonight. In Chanak Kiriti, first chapter and thirteenth verse, I have selected a few verses from the Chanak Kiriti and I have compiled them also together. Sometimes if the same thought is given, I have put two verses from two different chapters together to have a continuity of the thought. Yo dhruvani parityajya adhruvam parishevate dhruvani tasya nashyanti chadhruvam nashtamevahi Chanakya says, He who gives up imperishable for perishable he loses the imperishable and doubtlessly loses the perishable too. Yo dhruvani parityajya most often in life, why do we miss success? Why do we fail? Nobody actually puts effort towards failing. Everyone strives to succeed. succeed. But success doesn't come handy to many people. Only few are privileged to be successful in life. What is that? What Average is out majority of the people. And that is this principle Chanakya said. Yo Dhruvani Parityajya. Dhruva is imperishable, permanent, something which is steady, something which is unique. Dhruva, steady, as we have a polar star in the sky. Entire family of constellations keeps moving. But the polar star is always steady and hence it gives directions to many. Whenever you have a choice in life, just decide which is Dhruva, which is steady, which is long lasting, which is permanent. Yo Dhruvani Parityajya Adhruvam Parishevate Most often People fall victims to adhruva, that is temporary things. We are tempted by near future temptations. We fall victim to them. Yeah, I have a big goal in life, but that's going to take time. So let me just enjoy for a few more days. What we have done? We have yo dhruvani parityajya. We have sidelined our main goal and Adhruvam Parishevate We have fall, fallen a victim to the near future temptations. What happens? Since we have sidelined our main goal, Dhruva, which is permanent, that is gone. Because we have sidelined it, we have ignored it. And do we really get these near future temptations? No, Chanakya says. Because they were, in, they were perishable as it is. Even if you enjoy a few moments, it's not going to be lasting. Don't we teach our children? You have your exam on Monday morning. Why are you so engrossed with the game on Saturday evening? Study. Games are going to be there forever. Exam is not going to come forever. And if you do bad in exams, you will depend for the rest of your life. By not seeing the game, you are not going to waste. We teach our children. See, this is the difference. Exam is Dhruva. And game, watching game on the television is a Dhruva. In other words, prayer and Shreya. That's 
मृत्यु दे यमराज द लॉर्ड ऑफ द डेथ रिच इज नचिकेता इन कठोपनिषद एंड सेम इज गिवन बाय एग्जांपल इन श्रीमद् भागवत फोर्थ कैंटो इन द स्टोरी ऑफ ध्रुव उत्तानपाद द किंग हैड टू वाइज सुमिति एंड सुरुचि सुमिति इज ध्रुव एंड सुरुचि सुरुचि इज अध्रुव टेम्पटेशंस Falling, fallen, being fallen a victim to Suruchi. What did Tarpa, that is a Jivatma, an individual soul? What did he do? He did not accept Dhruva, the certainty. So there, Chanakya holds a red signal for us. Well, life is nothing but choices. Nobody. can make you happy or unhappy only our decisions only our choices make us happy or unhappy so our life is nothing but our decisions in the past our choices in the past when you are 22 and a graduate you had a choice now that you have finished your education and you have got a job you had a choice to marry or not to marry and then you choose and now you suffer <laughs> so it is a choice <laughs> it's for everyone life is nothing but choices whatever we choose comes to us do we choose dhruva or adhruva there is a beautiful proverb in hindi language aadhi taj puri ko dhave na aadhi mile na puri paave gujarati mein hai na karlo लाबी रेस नो बोलो Never do things that are fly-by-night things. Let me just get this. Let me just do this. Let me just do this, and then, then, then nothing is. What have a constant focus on your larger aim. And even your small activity, your day-to-day -day activity, should be keeping your ultimate aim in focus. You cannot have various focuses. otherwise a person loses everything the permanent and the temporary all <coughs> as i was saying yesterday mantra decision chanakya is very particular about the privacy of the mantra and whom to trust because he is a king maker whether in a corporation or in a family or in an institution or in an organization which level we whichever level you want to interpret this as chanakya says you should never trust certain people who are they in the 15th verse of the first chapter chanakya says nadinam shastra paninam nakhinam shunginam tatha vishwaso naiva kartavya स्त्री शुराज कुलेशु च यू शुड नेवर ट्रस्ट नदीना यू शुड नेवर ट्रस्ट अ रिवर इन जनरल अननोन वॉटर यू शुड नेवर ट्रस्ट वेदर फॉर ड्रिंकिंग और फॉर क्रॉसिंग और फॉर स्विमिंग नेवर ट्रस्ट एन अननोन वॉटर समबडी सेंट मी अ वीडियो ऑन व्हाट्सएप i can forward it to you if you wish uh, it's just 40 second video 
and probably some of you might have had it. These are two ladies and they appear to be Western ladies, European ladies. Uh, very happy on a, they are out on a picnic. And here is one lady with her pulse on her arm. And she requests the other, her friend, to click a picture for her. And right behind her, there seems to be like a water body, a pond, a lake, or maybe a river or something. There's a water body behind her. And this lady is, I mean, she's posing for pictures, and her friend is taking pictures. First picture, second picture, third picture, one more. And suddenly, a big crocodile comes from behind and opens his mouth and pulls this lady inside. She's gone. It's a 40 second video and if you see this video, you say, oh my God. And in less than 10 seconds, you see all water red and her purse floating on the water. And this lady was taking picture. She just keeps saying, oh my God, oh my God. She can't believe her eyes what happened. I have that video with me in my phone. Chanakya says, never trust unknown waters. Nadina, be very careful. Because usually it is our mentality whenever we go for a picnic or something, whenever we see water, hey, let's go. Please don't. It could be contaminated. It could be that, that you don't know what's in that inside, how deep it is. Nadina. Second, Chanakya says, Shastra Paninam, the person who has weapon in his hand, never trust him because it is he who makes decisions, not you. <laughs> <coughs> so don't trust him. It is up to him what to do with it. Nadina, Shastra Paninam, Nakhina. Normal translation that people do is lucky is uh, uh, beast or animals with nails, with paws. Don't trust them. But Chanakya doesn't mention that animals with, he says whoever with long nails, don't trust them. <laughs> Chanakya, I'll go ask him. And there's only one character that I can think of is from Ramayana, Shurpanakha. The very meaning of her name is Shurpanakha. Shurpa is in Gujarati we call Supu. Nakha. Her nails were so large. And you know what she did? She changed the entire course of Ramayana Katha. There are two characters in Ramayana. One is Mantra. And I am doing research after, doing the, after studying this Chanakya whether Mantra also had long nails or not. <laughs> but Shurpanakha definitely had. Her very name says Shurpanakha. Very long nails. Scientifically and psychologically speaking, and those who are the students of psychology will agree with me. Long nails is a symbol, subconsciously, it is a symbol of perversion, especially perverted sexuality. Long nails are always, it's, it's basically attention getting technique. And a person who craves attention definitely knows that he or she has nothing else except for these long nails to be attractive. A person with beautiful eyes or a person with beautiful hair or a person with beautiful face or a person with extreme wisdom, beautiful speech, will not try to go for, to stoop down to such a level that just by raising nails they want to be attractive. It's basically a sign of perversion. 
And I've talked this with so many uh, psychologists and they've agreed to that. Shurpankai Brahman is a classic example. And she changed the entire course of the story of Rama. Chanakya says, never trust people with long names. Check people's name tomorrow, not today. <laughs> so, Nadina, Shastrapanina, Nakhina, Shunginam, Tatha. Shungi, animals with horns. Never trust them. Because they can do anything. And you cannot fight with them. Vishwaso naiva kartavya. Chanakya is very categorical about it. Vishwaso naiva, na eva, never kartavya. And this last two, I need somebody to protect me, please. <laughs> Chanakya says, Strishu, never trust women. If you have a secrecy, if you have something that you don't want others to know, never tell a woman about it. Never. Because rest assured, if you tell your secret to a woman, it is going to be leaked somehow. I did a lot of research on this also, my dear brothers and sisters, because I personally have very high regard from women. I have a very high respect for women. I said, why should Chanakya, and it is in our other scriptures, even in Shukraniti. Situ well. Shukraniti. As we have Chanakya Niti, we have Shukraniti also. In Shukraniti, Shukraniti, Shukrachari also says that never trust a woman. I said, why this injustice to a lady? <coughs> I found answer from Mahabharata. Are you interested in knowing that? Okay. Or you just want to accept this that, okay, don't trust me when that's the okay. You just go on to go ahead with it. You want to know the reason? I found the reason in Mahabharata. Entire war of Mahabharat was over. Nobody survived. Mahabharat says only seven people survived from this 18 Akshayani of armies. Only seven people. Five Pandavas. And and of course, I am saying out here, I am not considering Krishna because he was not a soldier. He did not fight the war. He was a chariot here, Sarathi. <coughs> so five brothers, five Pandavas who survived, and only two people from Kaurava side. Uh, Krupacharya and Ashwatthama. Because they were <coughs> Chiranjivi. They were not supposed to die. They are living even today. So, Krupacharya and Ashwatthama from Kaurav army and five Pandavas. After this war, as a family duty, Yudhishthir was performing Shraddha, the rituals after a near and dear one passes away from the family. <coughs> King Yudhishthir was performing Shraddha, accompanied by his five brothers and Mother Kunta was sitting there, Draupadi was sitting there. And the learned Brahmin was performing the Shraddha. Those of you who have performed the Shraddha by learned Brahmin will know this. When you perform the Shraddha, Ekadasha, Dvadasha, Gyanu, Bharmu, Tiru, what we call Especially on the 13th day, when you perform Shraddha, you remember all your ancestors and you give water, tarpan to them. You offer water, tarpan to them. So it's an entire list. Usually all the family members are present at that time. Obviously the person who is doing Shraddha may not know 
who all have passed away and their names, they will not know. Person, so they ask, how many of you have been in such an uh, atmosphere? Have you seen this? But have you lost an uncle? The, the person will say, Kaka, oh yeah. Chatti Padina Pela Kaka, Mani Lal, and Munam Lende Tarpana. So somebody will suggest that, yeah, you have lost an uncle. Though this person was in all my uncle are alive. Uncle Sarah, no, you have lost one uncle who was very young when he passed away and you were not even born when he was. Mani Lal was his name. So this is how people remind him and they offer the bottle, Tarpana. One after the other, the uncle, the aunts, aunties, Shwasur Paksha, everything came, in-laws, gurus, all the elders, and finally, the Brahmin said, if you have lost an elder brother, offer him. Cousins had come, so he gave to all of them, Kauravas. But if you have lost an elder brother, offer what? And Yudhishthira just said, because he was the eldest in the Pandavas. And at that time, Mother Kunta said, Yudhishthira, offer water. Give water. Yudhishthira asked, Mom, the priest is saying about the elder brother and I am the eldest. So there is no question of giving water. Mother Kunta said, no, give in the name of Karana. <coughs> he was your elder brother. Is it? With tears in his eyes, Yudhishthira offered Tarpan to Karana. But then he remembered so many things. It was Yudhishthira who insisted on Arjun that he kills Karana before the sunset. It was Yudhishthira who instigated Arjun. If you don't kill Karana by this evening, give your Gandiva to someone else. You don't deserve to be holding your famous arch, the Gandiva. <laughs> Yudhishthir, being as righteous as he was, he felt so bad that I became instrumental in killing my own elder brother. He just looked at Kunta and said, Mother, you never told us about it. How could you keep such a secret? And today, while performing this Shraddha, I, Dharmaraj, Yudhishthira says, curse that henceforth no lady will ever be able to keep a secret. She will have to tell somebody about it. So dear sisters, you have the curse from Yudhishthira. <laughs> Don't feel bad when you jabber with somebody. <laughs> now you have. It's not my fault. It's Yudhishthira's fault. <clears throat> if your husband scolds you, where did you do Why did you tell to someone? Go ask Yudhishthira. <laughs> says, Vishwaso Naiva Kartavya. Don't trust a lady. And finally he says, Raja Kuleishucha. Never trust a member of a royal family. Because why? A member of a Raja Kulu. Never trust them. <coughs> because they are born and they are raised in such an atmosphere that they have greatest of ambitions and at the same time they are the weakest of people with consistent sense of insecurity. As I say, Chanakya will say it very in an aphorical, aphorism way, in a very 
सुत्रात्मक वे मैं दिन के वेरी फर्मिले सिस्टम बट यू हैव टू थिंक अबाउट इट वाई चाणक्य से You actually should feel pity about these people who are born in the royal family, because since childhood they have everything. They have never seen deprivation. Since they have not seen deprivation, their expectations are always so high. Their mentality is such that whatever they say must be done. They just order, and there is huge army of attendants. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, prince. Yes, princess. Yes, princess. So, if you go against them, they are never used to listening a no. People from royal families, they are never used to listening a no. And because of their constant sense of insecurity, <coughs> they have a typical way of thinking. They consider each one as a threat. I have been in contact with people from royal families, and. today there are no royalty there are no royal families because there are no kingships left but even the families were extremely rich who trust people from such families because they are constantly they feel they are constantly vulnerable and they really are so their way of thinking is entirely different from a common one they constantly doubt everybody this person take something away from me even if you praise them they doubt you and if you criticize them you have had it yeah, because they are not used to this you will find it so difficult to go along with such people and hence chanakya says don't trust them. they are very whimsical yes this is what <coughs> people coming from royal families people coming from filthily affluent families are very whimsical they always want things their way period so are you ready to dance according to that tunes all the time are you ready to kill your own voice all the time Maybe then you can go with them. Don't trust this. So Nadi Nam Shastra Pani Nam Dakhi Nam Shrungi Nam Dha Vishwaso Neva Kartavya Sri Shuraja Kule Shucha. This six type of people, you never know when they will turn your their back towards you or when they will attack you stealthily. Similarly, on trusting, Chanakya says in the fifth verse of the second chapter, Parokshe karya hantaram pratyakshe priya vadidam varjaye tadrsham mitram vishakumbham payo mukham. Parokshe karya hantar. Behind your back. this person is destroying you he is ruining your efforts and your projects but pratyakshe priyavadinam but in front of your eyes he is a very sweet talker varjaye tadrsham mitram because he is a sweet talker you may mistake him as your friend but the moment you realize that this person is just a sweet talker on the face and behind my back he is ruining my efforts leave him immediately reject him immediately why because he is vishakumbham payomukham he is like a pot of 
poison having just a illusion of milk over it with a milk, little bit of milk on the top vishakumbham ayo this sounds very simple and you may feel that what's new about it but if you think about your own life you will find so many people and we can't get rid of these people simply because they are sweet talkers on the face and we feel we talk such a sweetly on the face how can we be blunt to him or her <coughs> this our nicety acts against us you know that this person is not right for you he is stabbing you behind the back he is criticizing you out there in the society behind your back but still you cannot confront that person or you cannot create a safe distance from that person simply because he or she is a sweet talker on the face don't get deluded by this sweet talks create your stand make yourself very clear in front of this people it's going to be good for you because your softness will be your enemy's strength he keep talking sweet in front of you because he knows that you like it and under this cover ayo mukham he is creating the pot of poison behind your back have a very clear stand chalakya says a it will retard this person who is doing negative activity behind your back and b you will be safer in the eyes of the society since we have created a safe distance people will now not believe that person because you have made it very clear that you are not with him he is not your accomplice unless and until you create this distance people will be misguided because he is a sweet talker he is with you and when your own person is creating negative things behind your back people at large will be confused so clear that confusion from the minds of people you have nothing to do with such people and that will help you in the long run in short you don't have to be nice with people who just pretend to be nice with you and are not really nice with you have a very clear stand charakya says same on the trust part in the sixth verse of the second chapter charakya says na vishwase kumitre cha mitre cha api na vishwase kadachit kupitam mitram gun sarvam guhyam prakashe it is very obvious that you are not going to trust your enemy na vishwase kumitre cha a bad friend kumitra a bad friend Maybe a just an acquaintance, or uh, you have just met somewhere, and it's good. Cool. Don't trust. Do not trust a bad companion. <clears throat> But what what is more important is Charaka says, "Mitre chapi na vishwasit." Nor even trust an ordinary friend. He is a friend. Why not trust him? Charakya says, "Kadachit kupitam mitram sarvam guhyam prakashe." Sometimes, kupitam mitram, this friend of yours, when he gets angry, he will publish all your secrets in front of people. You are not going to be in good terms with everybody all the time. you enter into a quarrel with your own spouse whom you have promised to stay together for the rest of your life 
Even then you enter into a quarrel. You are at loggerheads. Then this friend, you have not entered into an agreement to be faithful for the rest of life. One small incidence, he feels bad about something about you, then he will go and tell everyone about you. So don't tell. Navishwaset kumitrecha. Mitrecha api navishwaset kalachit kupitam mitram sarvam guhiyam prakar. Chanakya says, keep your mind to yourself. Your ideas, your thoughts to yourself. Manasa chintitam karyam vacha naiva prakashayet. Mantrena rakshayet gudham karye chapi niyojayet. Manasa chintitam karyam. The action, your plan of action, your projects that you have contemplated with your mind. <coughs> Vacha neva prakashe, don't publish them through words. Mantrena rakshaye gudham, keep them secret like a mantra. <coughs> and the definition of mantra itself is manana trayate iti mantra, that which protects you by constant contemplation. Mantra is to be always kept secret. Its secrecy is its strength. Karye chapin. At the same time, while keeping it secret, keep putting your efforts towards its realization, towards its actualization. Be determined to carry it into execution. So don't if you have bigger plans, if you have uh, very optimistic projects, don't speak out. Modern psychologists also say, keep your projects to yourself. If you keep talking about it, its strength reduces. You will derive an illusionary satisfaction of having achieved those dreams just by talking it to people. My grandmother used to say, if something is very important to you, Vita, never tell anyone till it comes true. And I have found so many people who believe in this. Do we have some? Just raise your hand who believe in not to tell anybody very important thing till it comes true. Yes, it is very important. In the blind faith, people also say, Tokai Jai. When you speak it out, then it doesn't come true. So if you really want something to happen, don't tell anybody. Keep it to yourself and put 100% efforts towards its success. Chanakya tells us, that in the world there are various types of people and there are all kinds of things good, bad, not so good, not so bad <clears throat> but you should be selective in what is the best he says vishadapyamritam grahiyam amedhyadapi kanchalam amit and when I was comparing various texts of Chanakya, see, it needs a scholastic approach. It's at least 2300 years. So, there are interpolations, there are there are some additions to it, there are some changes in the text. 
and you need to know the Sanskrit language which is the correct text. In this verse we get an interpolation which says Nicha Dhaptyuttamam Vidyam Sri Ratnam Dushkuladapi So there are totally six things Chanakya says <coughs> you should select the best. What? Vishadapyam Ratam Grahiyam Even from poison extract nectar as gods and demons did during the churning of ocean. <coughs> Your eyes should be focused on the best amongst the worst. Vishadapyamritam grahiyam Amityadapikanchanam Wash and take back gold if it is fallen in filth. Because gold is pure. Just by falling in dirt, the gold doesn't get impure. Amitra dapi sadvruttam. Sadvruttam amitra api. We need to understand this. Sadvruttam can be interpreted in two ways. A sadvruttam. Good behavior from Amitra, enemy. <coughs> Even if that person is your enemy, but if he has good behavior, learn from him. And another interpretation from Sadhguru is Vritti is profession, a source of income to be precise. Even if your enemy has a good business sense or a good business technique, or a good field of business, learn from you. But he is doing, if you know that this is a pain thing, it is a rewarding thing, there is nothing. No, but my enemy also does it. So what? You can do it too. Avitra dapi sadvruttam, bala dapi subhashitam, an inspiring, an inspirational good thought from a child also, you can learn. Nicha Dapyuttamam Vidya Uttamam Vidya The best of the wisdom, the best of the learning and which is the best of the learning, which is the Uttama Vidya, Atma Vidya The spiritual wisdom You can take it from Nicha From a person who is born in a low family or from a person who is not very respected in the society, but if he has to offer you the spiritual wisdom, take it from it. Nicha dapi uttamam vidyam stri ratnam dushkula dapi And even in a, from a disreputable family, you have a stri ratna, a girl who is virtuous, who is meritorious, accept her. There is nothing wrong. We have these references in our scriptures. If you want to bring a bride for your son, just look at the daughter, how is she? If she is virtuous, if she is good, you can accept her as your bride. But if you want to give your daughter in marriage to some people, you have to check so many things. How is the boy? How is the family? How are his parents? Are they wealthy enough? How is their home? You should check everything. But if you want a bride for your son, if she is good, just accept her. Stri Ratnam Dushkuladapi. Then don't look and say, oh, but her parents are like this and her. nothing doing. If she is good and if you are satisfied about it, just accept her. Chanakya says that your eyes should be focused always on the best. And it is the value of the object or a person which is best adds value and happiness to your life. Always look for good.
good qualities in others. There was this professor in the class who was teaching good habits to the students. He did an experiment. He took out a $50 bill and showed it to them. It was a crisp new bill out of the bank, out of the treasury. And he showed to everyone, do you like it? Who will say no? Everybody said yes, it's good. You know what this professor did now? Can I have a bill, please? Any amount, not just 50, any amount. I'm going to return it. Thank you so much. This is neither crisp, nor a fifty dollar, nor out of the just treasury right away. But well, it is a currency note. Everyone likes it, obviously. If I give, nobody is going to say no, 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 we don't want it. Even if it is coming from a Brahmin, you are going to accept it. So now. I crumpled it. And now if I open, obviously it is not as crisp as it was. But will anybody say no to this? If I just say, come on, take it. Will you to say yes? If I just pick up some mud and sand and apply on this and various colors on this and make it still dirtier, will anyone say no to it? <coughs> this professor said that in spite of it being crumpled, in spite of it being spoiled with mud and ugly colors, nobody says no to a currency note. Why? Because each one of you are wise enough to understand that it is money, it has a monetary value in spite of it being crumpled or mud or colors. Similarly, each person sitting here in front of me has a definite value has some or the other quality in him or her. Because they are created by God. As you see, the stamp on this. We all are stamped by God. Because He created us. He has put something good in each one of us. Staying in this world, we may be tainted. We may have fallen somewhere. There might be some blemishes on us, true or false, who cares? But don't forget, there is something nice, there is something divine in each one of us. And Janakya says, if you want to be successful in life, your eye and your focus should always be on the nicety of a person and not on his blemishes. Critics you will find everywhere. But a person who actually knows the quality is important. 
For him, the sadhana, the means are not as important. The goal is important and result is important. <coughs> well, that's a theory. If you put Gandhiji in the discussion, then you will have an entire different perspective of, the, of this discussion. Gandhiji would say, for me, means is important. Whether I achieve the end or not is not important. But that's his perspective. There are some people for whom means are important. Sadhan shuddhi. Whether we achieve some, he says, even if I get freedom 10 years later, or even if I don't get freedom, it's fine. But I don't want wrong means. There should be no violence. There should be no wrong things. But for Chanakya, it is the end result which is important. And he says, here, now next two verses, Chanakya says where sh one should not stay. Because these are the things which are constant pinching on his soul, which create unhappiness in individual. First verse of this, 14th verse of the second chapter, Chanakya says, Kanta vi yoga swajana pamanam runasya shesham kundrupasya seva. Daritya bhava dvimukhancha mitram vinagnina pancha dahanti kayam. And there is a different version to this also. It says, Daritya bhava vishama sabhacha vinagni vete pradahanti kayam. So in the first version, we have five things. In the second version, there are six things. We will consider all. Chanakya says, Ete, these things, Vinagnina Dahantikayam, they burn your body without fire. Meaning, they constantly keep you in sorrow, they constantly keep you in agony. Which are they? First, Kanta Viyoga, the first thing. Chanakya is not that bad, he respects women too. He says, when your wife is away, Kanta Yoga. If the wife goes to India for three weeks, and by the time she returns, the man has lost five pounds. Vinag Vina Tantika. Without fire, the body burns. <laughs> Kanta Yoga. And for a lady, it is the uh, distance from her husband. But being away from the beloved spouse. This adjective is very important. Beloved spouse. And that is why he just not, it doesn't say Patni. He says Kanta. Kanta is beloved wife. And for a woman, it's beloved husband. Because if this adjective is not there, then when, if she is away, you are happier. <laughs> 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 
Secondly, Swajanapamanaha. Being insulted and humiliated by own people. Swajanapamanaha. Only insult is not that bad. Or only humiliation, it doesn't bother you so much. But being humiliated by own people. You are walking on a very busy street on Manhattan. And by mistake, you just head on collision, you collide with somebody, and that person passes a nasty comment towards you. You have never seen this person in your life, and you are never ever going to see him again. Probably for a moment, it will hurt you that, hey, I didn't do it deliberately. It's a busy street, then who cares? You forget about it. It doesn't bother you much. You don't carry it home. But your own person, Swajan, insults you, humiliates you, it doesn't respect you. It, without, without, without fire, it burns you. If we see the situation of senior citizens and some families, we feel that because of old age they are losing weight. No, there is some other reason too. They are constantly ignored, they are constantly humiliated. Don't come in the kitchen. Don't do this. Why did you open the door? Why did you attend the phone? I told you not to attend the phone. Let me go on the sitting machine. Constantly. Why did you change the channel of the television? Vinag Vinag Make sure that you never insult your own person because it is going to leave a deep scar on that person's heart. Kantavi Yoga Swajana Pamanam Runasya Shesham. This can be interpreted in two ways. Runasya Shesham is a surviving enemy in the war. Another is Runasya Shesham is inability to pay your debt. Kunrapasya Seva, serving a bad king, <coughs> a wicked king. You will say, Why do you have kings? But serving a bad boss. You see the person who is not satisfied with his job, who is a very critical boss. No matter how much you work, no matter how much you, how much well you work, no matter how much long hours you put in. But here is a boss who doesn't appreciate you at all. Not only doesn't appreciate you, but he keeps criticizing you. Kundrupasya <coughs> seva. It's a constant agony, it's a pinching thing on your mind. Daritya bhava vimukhancha mitram. Your friends leave you simply because you don't have money anymore. When you are wealthy, they used to visit you every evening, they used to have grand party at your home at your expense. But now that you are in a liquidity crunch, they don't visit you anymore. Not only they don't visit, they just go somewhere else and say, take, beware of the hmm, party deleted as well. <laughs> and when you come to know about this, You can't even go and tell that person a word because you know you are in a precarious position at the moment. Daridra bhava vimukhancha mitram vinad vina pancha dahantikai. Without fire, these are the five things which were 
us. And one more thing, as I said in a different version, was Daridra Bhava, that's poverty, and Vishama Sabhacha. Being in an assembly where everyone is opposing you. Say you are in a committee somewhere. You come out with a project and everyone opposes it. No, we are not going to do it. No. You say, okay, this one is not acceptable to you. You come out with some other good thing and you really want to do good things to the society. And then I speak, no, just because you have brought it. No, no. And they always keep criticizing you. Vishama Sabaj. You feel like resigning from that committee. You don't want to be there anymore. Because what's the point of you being there? They don't allow you to work. They don't allow you to put in your right efforts. Vishama Sabaj. Vinaglina Pancha Dahantikaya. In another words, the eighth verse of the fourth chapter, Chanakya lists some more things, some few things. Kugram vasa kulahina seva kuho janam krodha mukhi chavharya putrascha murko vidavacha kanya vinagrina shat pradhantikaya. These are six things Chanakya says which burn a person without fire. Kugrama Vasa Living in a village not just a village but it could be a town too which is Kugrama Kugrama can be interpreted as A which does not have enough living facilities proper facilities There is a scarcity of water there is a scarcity of electricity even if you want to fill up your gas in the car, you have to drive 10 miles and you have to stand in the queue for 2 hours to get 2 gallons of gas. We have seen such scarcity way back from some 3 decades back in India. And those of you who have spent your childhood or young age probably remember that. For rationing you have to stand in queue. Everything Q. Even if you want a gas cylinder for cooking, you have to wait for two months or bribe. <coughs> now things are much better. But this is what when you don't have proper living facilities or conditions. Another interpretation of Ku Grama, which is more important today, is a neighborhood which is inhibited by wrong people. Kugrama Vas. Step out of your home and you are surrounded by wrong kind of people. Addicts and criminals and antisocial elements. You are constantly worried. Your children are going to play with such people. What kind of samskar they will derive. What kind of values they will bring home? So, Kugrama Vasala, it's the constant. And that is why people always want, if we have enough money, we want to change our home. We want to go to the better, better neighborhood. Kugrama Vasa, Kulahina Seva, serving a person who is born in a low family. Kulahina Seva. Meaning, serving a person who is undignified. But you are in a situation that you have to say yes to him all the time. Kubhojanam. Bad food. Unwholesome food. A food that doesn't suit you. It is not just not tasty, but it doesn't suit you. You have allergy of potato and you are a guest in a family where every morning, evening 
they go put it out. Next day onwards, you will turn into a balloon with gas. Krodhamukhi Chabhariya. Do I need to translate? <laughs> no, we won't. <coughs> Wife with an angry face all the time. A frowning wife. She always has this face too. Sidhu Jodhu Bulega Nathi. If you reach home early, she will ask you, why have you come early? If you reach late, obviously there is a question, what makes you so late? And if you reach on time, why? Krodha Mukhi Chavariya. Putrasya Murkha, a foolish son, a son who is not paying attention to his studies, a son who is not paying attention to his career, his life, a son who is in bad company. Actually, it's a constant source of agony for a person. Vidava Chakalya, a young daughter who is widowed. And was staying with you, or even away from you. But being a par father or being a parent, and you have a widowed young daughter in front of you, it's a constant source of agony. Without fire, Chanakya says, they keep burning. <coughs> this one verse is the first verse of the third chapter. Chanakya says he creates a very positive attitude towards life. He inspires us not to be demoralized. Kasya dosha kule nasti vyadhina kona piditaha vyasanam kenana praptam kasya saukhyam nirantaram. Chanakya is asking four questions in four stanzas of this verse of Anushtup Chandra. Kasya do shah kule nasti. Whose family is without a blemish? None. All the families have some or the other blemish at some point of time or other. So there is not a single family in this world which is without a blemish. Society needs to point fingers at people and they have not spared even Lord Ram or Sri Krishna from this. They have criticized Ram and Krishna also. So who are we? If people criticize you, Chanakya says, don't get demoralized. It is the tendency of the society. Vyadhina kona peditaha, Chanakya is asking. Who is free from sickness? I have seen there are some people, they hide if they are sick, they don't go out. I mean, as a taking care, if they don't go out of the house, it's a different story. But they don't step out, they keep it a secret. I'm, I'm, I'm not well, I'm not well. Why? Vyadhina kona pedita. There can be a sickness. Sometimes people hide their disease also. They don't tell people. I sometimes respect this Western heroes. Uh, maybe they're coming from the glamour world or from the sports field. There was this heroine of Hollywood. She had breast cancer. Last year when I was here, I had read in the newspapers. And she publicly announced it that this is the trouble I have. I don't know the name of the Angelina Jolie. I read in the articles here. I think this was last summer. And why did she 
she tried to create an awareness towards the thesis. I mean, it was a preemptive state or something. Because her mother had, and she wanted something, I, I forgot about it. But what the point here is, there are some big players who had AIDS and they came out in the public and they said, yes, here I am. Vyadhira Kona Pidita. Have a positive attitude towards it. <coughs> there is not a single person on this earth who is not suffering by some or the other disease. Vyasanam Kenana Praptam. Here, the Vyasan is sorrow, grief. Vyasan is not addiction. Everyone has some or the other problem in the family. Don't be demoralized. Yeah, you don't go and announce it with the people. Fine. But you should have a positive attitude. That this is a fact of life. In Kasya Saukhyam Nirantaram Who is happy forever? No, it's like day and night. Sometimes there are good times, sometimes there are adversities. It's okay. You don't have to feel low when there are rough times. Everyone has faced adversity in life. Even when Lord takes incarnation and comes on this earth, he also had to take face adversity. It's okay. Chanakya says, have a positive attitude in such situations and that will help you a lot. Tomorrow, we are going to discuss a few more of these verses of Chanakya Niti, but tomorrow I am going to focus more on the family values that Chanakya is preaching. What is important for us as a family to raise a family, to be happy in a family. I am going to focus more on such verses tomorrow, along with other verses from Chanak Kemiti. Uh, today, before we go on to questions, Narubai, have you kept it ready? We want to inaugurate a book here. We will do it again also in Bhagavad Gita chapter because there may be something. May I request Arvind Bhai, Dr. Arvind Bhai Shah, Arvind Bhai Dhariya, Dinesh Bhai Kapadi, of course, Saitu Bhai. Please come here to inaugurate this book. Ramesh Bhai. Bunny, 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 both. Huh? Of course. Madhubai, are you guys? Please, Madhubai, Madhubai, but please, please come. <coughs> so, Madhubai, did Madhubai give you something? Do you want to announce it? Before I discuss details about the books, Parish Bhai Dhaniya. Parish Bhai, please come. Please give a big round of applause to Bhai Shri. Hanuman, Ocean 
know wisdom and virtues? It's in English. It's compiled from the discourses of Pujya Shri Pandya. The highlights of the book. It's English translation of each word and each Javai of Hanuman Jalisa, along with its detailed explanation. Its social message as a guidance to the modern life. It's a solution to various changes, challenges in the life. Scientific and spiritual meaning of Hanuman Jalisa. It's an explanation of management principle through Hanuman Jalisa. It's analysis of Hanuman Jalisa and Chopai, especially for our young children, next generation. And we are lucky to witness the release of the book in front of us today. This book and other material, written CDs, DVDs, are kept in the back. Whoever wants to purchase it, they can purchase. Also, last year, when Temple celebrated <coughs> Silver Jubilee, we also had some Kutan Pajama for men. As Sharmaji would like to say, it's 50% off and some saris too. It's not buy one, get one free. It's 50% off on the first piece. Feel free to take advantage of that. At this time, we would like to conduct Q&A session. Uh, so I want to say a few things about this book. How many of you know or chant on Man Chalisa? How many of you know the meaning of Hanuman Chalisa? Maybe a few. But a deeper meaning, hardly anybody knows. In last three years, I gave more than 27 discourses and seminars on Hanuman Chalisa world over. And this book is a compilation of all those seminars. It's a 300 page book on Hanuman Chalisa, where each word and each chopai is translated into English, its social meaning is given. So how chopai of Hanuman Chalisa is applicable in our today's life? How does it help us in modern life? A. B. Its scientific meaning. Jugu Sahasra Jojana Parabhanu Lilo Tahi Madhuru Falajanu. What is this Jugu Sahasra means? How we measure distance in terms of time, like some days are measured in light years. So scientific meaning, it's spiritual meaning. Moreover, Harmanji is the best manager that the world has produced. All the leelas of Harmanji, even a child, when he sees animated movie of Harmanji, he feels so happy and he says, wow, miracle. It's not a miracle, it's actually a project successfully completed by Hanumanji. Be it going in search of Sita, be it burning the Lanka, be it bringing Sanjeevani or for Lakshmanji. These are all impossible projects. Durgama kaj jagat ke jete, sugama anugraha tumhare jete. Hanumanji's logistics, Hanumanji's planning, and Hanumanji's correct execution of the planning makes even the most difficult task of the world extremely simple. What are the principles of management involved in it? And when I gave this discourse to AMA and IIM in Andava, which is the best management institution 
Federal is a professor of IIM management for sitting in front of me listening to discourses of management based on Hanuman Chalisa. And then I did like, I am not a management graduate, but they are, they are professors. They shared that this is the principle of management which is so beautifully woven in today's discourse of Hanuman Chalisa. So this is the book. Actually, it is, uh, I just talked to Ramesh Bhai. It is $12, but Dr. Ramesh Bhai Thakta has sponsored first 100 copies and it will be available here for just $10. First 100 copies are sponsored by Dr. Ramesh Bhai Mujir Ali. It is available for $10. Uh, its inauguration was done in Sydney uh, on Hanuman Jayanti Day, Siddhu Bhai. Of course, there are very few copies there. In less than five minutes, all the copies were gone. And Madhu Karbhai, I remember. They are Madhu Bhai, Madhu Karbhai, so it's a He said, this is the book, we should not be having one per family, it should be per person. And it should be gifted as birthday gifts or anything. So this is what I wanted to say. Thank you, Sethu Bhai. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, if you have questions. Yeah, yes, sir. The record, okay. The record is one. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. This is wisdom from God, guidance from God, how to live and how to be like uh, successful, like Hanuman. If you have questions, yes. I have a question actually yesterday uh, I was about to say but so the question is what quality in Chandra's soul in Chandra put when he wanted to buy from Nura. So he was a child His confidence as a child. I just touched upon it and I went further. <coughs> Chanakya uh, actually saw Chandragupta Mauri as a child playing with his friends and it was a game where <coughs> Chanakya, uh, the Chandragupta Mauri was acting as a king. He did not allow even Chanakya to pass through his quote-unquote court. He was playing uh, under a tree. And Chanakya had to take a formal permission, Your Honor, may I come and sit in your court? And he says, Yes, you may. On finding, Chanakya knew that, Chana came to know that he was not coming from a very affluent family, that he has this thing. He was the son of a very simple male servant, Mura, as I said. Chanakya, has he, he had ability to know a person. He said, without some exceptional qualities, probably of past births or something, a child cannot show such a confidence as a king. And then he saw samudrik qualities, lakshan, his eyes, his nose, our, uh, not horror, astrology, but it is samudrik shastra. You can predict the future of a person by his organs, body organs and shape of the body. So there were so many things put together which inspired Chanakya to select Chandragupta Maurya as his disciple and the next king. We have one more question from Ashok Bhai. Yes. 
Bhubanavai, uh, you said in one of the, uh, you know, during this lecture that never trust a woman or never disclose any secret to a woman. I guess uh, we have to close your ears. <laughs> I, I think wife is not an exception either in this, right? So, but wife is not an exception also, I believe. When have you, you married a woman? <laughs> all I'm saying, well, all I'm saying is three. Three. It's three. Okay. Three. But, but it's not even a mother, because when I said, told you the story. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. But my question is in terms of this uh, social environment, okay, when the concealment of a secret, Knowingly, unknowingly, when it disclosed to your, our counterpart, it leads to a matrimonial disaster. So, what Chanakya has suggested any uh, theory to rescue out of this matrimonial disaster? <laughs> Chanakya says that the best kept secret is that which does not even give a hint to other person that this is a secret. That's where your wisdom about your secrecy is. You can't say, hey, I have a secret, I'm not going to tell you. Hey, I have a secret, I'm not going to tell you. Then you are going to put fire in your matrimonial life. <laughs> the best secret is that nobody should know that you are keeping it a secret. That's what the secret is all about. But then it tantamounts to infidelity. Infidelity. You are not fidel. No, it's your counterpart. It's not that. It's not that. Because who knows? They are keeping some secrets from you, and you don't even know about it. <laughs> that is very usual. <laughs> See, and you are accepting it. Next question. Next question is. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> With your question, <coughs> yes. you know, in the Chanakya quotes, one of the Chanakya quotes, okay, it says that select your friend from your status or select your wife also from your status, yes. right? That's the one of the quotes. The other quote which you just uh, taught us, right? yes. Yes, yes, yes. that you can select. <coughs> a lady, no, no, it's a very good question. A virtuous, virtuous lady from a lower class family. Wonderful. So there is a controversy between these two. This, this is a very good question, Ashok. I, I must compliment you for this question. I deliberately did not go into that verse, the first verse that you are talking and quoting, because it's a very famous verse. But now that you are quoted and you have come up with a question, it is my duty to answer you, Ashok. He's, he's, he has read about Charakya and he is absolutely right when he says, in one of the verses, Charakya says, your friendship and matrimonial relation should be kept always with the people of the same status. And the verse that I say today, Charakya say that Sri Ratna Nichakuladapi, you can bring it from any family. Putting two things together and trying to find a golden mean, Ashok Bhai, I, what my mind tells me is, trying to understand Chanakya in the right perspective, is, yes, as a thumb rule, it helps you when you have relations in the same status. But here Chanakya gives you an adjective, Sri Ratna, a meritorious lady, an exceptionally virtuous lady, if she is in not in equal status, then there is no harm because ultimately, what does status mean? It means that you have some values, you have some virtues that was decide your status in the society. A virtuous, a precious three ratna jewel fallen in a lower category, then you can actually uplift her and take it because actually she belongs to your strata by circumstances. She is in the lower category. So that's an exception. Is. Maharaj. 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 Any other question? Yes. I can't hear you. Sorry. My 
According to Charakya, you are right. But that's, uh, that's not the right way to do it. I say that is why I quoted Mahatma Gandhi also. So that's a different opinion. We are studying Charakya, so we have to see, understand what Charakya has to say. There is a different opinion where, as I said, Mahatma Gandhi is the closest example that you can have in the near past. He would say, I would not attain freedom, but means are very important. He actually withdrew Satyagraha when he found people uh, taking a violent path. So that was Mahatma Gandhi, that was his principle. He would say, I would die, but I would not leave my means. Get it? So these are two different people. When I give discourses on Mahabharata, which lasts for more than a month sometimes, I compare Bhishma, Pitama and Krishna in Mahabharata. Krishna is a very practical God. You will see so many compromises, so to say, they are not actually compromises because it is done by Krishna with such a deep and very, very clear thinking. But you will find Bhishma more relevant. You will find Bhishma more consistent. Bhishma is a constitutionalist, while Krishna is a revolutionist. Do you always find these two schools of thought? And you have to understand them in the right perspective. Here it was Chanakya's thought and one may oppose it, yes. You have a right to uh, differ, have a different opinion from Chanakya. That no, for me, means are more important than the end result. It's your opinion. And Chanakya is happy with it. Any other question? See you tomorrow. Krishnaya Vasudevaya Haraya Paramatmane Pranata Kleshanashaya Govindaya Namo Namaha Om Shanti Shanti Shanti